Hi guys, I'm Kieran McAvoy and welcome back to another video. It's great to have you here. Today I'm going to be carrying on with my guide to engineering maths. And I haven't done one of these videos in a while, so I'm excited to get back into it. And we're going to be talking about the Gauss-Jordan method of working out the inverse of a matrix. And although we'll be going through how to do that, we're going to be mainly focusing on why it works. So let's get into it. So like I said, what we want to be doing is trying to find the inverse of a matrix. And we're going to be doing that using the Gauss-Jordan method. Now this method uses Gaussian elimination uh, using elementary row operations. And if you don't know what elementary row operations are and what I'm talking about here, then I would suggest you go and watch my Gaussian elimination video so that then you can sort of get a grasp as to what elementary row operations are. Uh, I'll be giving them, a, I'll give a little brief overview of what they are here, but that's, um, that's a great place to start. So let's go through an example and uh, just to show what this method is and what the result is. So let's say we have a matrix 1, 0, 2, 0, 0, 5, minus 3, 1, minus 6, and we want to find its inverse. Well, the Gauss-Jordan method says what we need to do is we need to set up what's called an augmented matrix where we have our original matrix and we want to, and we have an identity matrix as well, creating this augmented matrix. Now what our target is, is to get our original matrix, the one on the left, into an identity matrix form using elementary row operations. Now, just quickly, elementary row operations, what we're allowed to do is we're allowed to swap a row we're allowed to scale a row by some number, or we're allowed to add a row to another, or even add a scaled version of a row to another, right? So just using that, actually try and get the matrix into an identity matrix form. So looking at this matrix, we have a one in the top left-hand corner. Now that looks pretty good. That looks okay. They, they, you know, we don't want to be moving that. And we have a one in the middle of the third row. Uh, so what we can do is if we swap the third row and the second row, now we have that one in the middle of the second row, exactly where we want it to be, to you know, be you know, going towards the identity matrix. Now the important thing, the reason why it's an augmented matrix is that we need to do it across the whole row. So whatever we do to the left hand matrix, we need to do to the right hand matrix. So we need to then swap rows two and three of the identity matrix on the right hand side. So anything we do to the left hand side, we have to do to the right hand side. So continuing on, row three now has 0, 0, 005 in it. So if we just divide row three by five, we'll then get a leading diagonal of our original matrix of ones across the thing. So that's looking very good in the form of, in, you know, going towards getting the identity matrix. And remember, we need to do exactly the same thing to the right hand side. So now we have zero, one fifth, zero, okay? So next up, what we could do is we could replace row two with row two plus three times row one. And what that's gonna do is the current row two, minus three, one, minus six, we're going to cancel out the minus three and the minus six because we're gonna be adding three and then we're gonna be adding six as well. And what we'll be left with is zero, one, zero in the second row of the matrix. But remember, we need to do exactly the same thing to the right hand side and what we're left with then is three, zero, one in the second row of the right hand matrix. Next, what we can do, the only thing left to do is get rid of that two up in the top right of our matrix. And so we can do that by replacing row one with row one minus two times row three. That then eliminates that two. And so, so long as we do exactly the same thing to the right hand side, what we're left with on this right hand side, now that we've reached the final thing where we have the identity matrix where our original matrix was, we now have our inverse on this right hand side. That is what it's saying to us. And we can check that quickly by multiplying them together. And lo and behold, we get the identity matrix because a matrix multiplied by its inverse gives the identity matrix. 
Now, of course, I've gone through that pretty quickly, and I do suggest that if you if that did feel a bit fast and you didn't really know what was going on, I really do suggest you go and watch that other video talking about Gaussian elimination. So we now have the inverse of our matrix. That's a fan it's a fantastic method. It really is, and. Um, it then means that you can get the inverse without having to worry about all this sort of cofactors business and transposing the matrix and all that kind of stuff, which is a long-winded way of finding the, uh, finding the inverse. So now the question is, why does it work? What's going on here? Well, the first question that we need to be answering is, what are these row operations? What are we actually doing here? Because, you know, in maths, you don't tend to just be able to just swap things. You know, there has to be something that's causing that swap, or you're not able to just scale something up. You have to, something has to be causing that scaling, you know, all of that kind of stuff. And it's no different here. Uh, we're not just swapping rows. We're not just adding rows to one another. What we're, what we're actually doing with these elementary row operations is we're pre-multiplying our matrix by what's called an elementary matrix. And an elementary matrix is a matrix that differs from the identity matrix by one thing, by, by a certain, by one difference, one difference from the identity matrix. So for instance, if we had the identity matrix of leading ones and the second row, second column element was changed to two, that would be one difference between the identity matrix and this elementary matrix that we've just created. And let's see what that would do to a generic matrix. As you can see, the resulting matrix is exactly the same matrix that we started with, but the second row is now all multiplied by two. Now, if you don't, if you don't feel comfortable as to why that is, then I do suggest you go and uh, watch my video on matrix multiplication and understand why we actually multiply the way we do and in turn understand how to actually multiply matrices, matrices together. But for now I'm going to continue on assuming that you know how to multiply matrices together. Now it's important to know what's gone on here. The second row of the resulting matrix is the original matrix second row multiplied by two. And if we look at our elementary matrix, that is exactly the same as the identity matrix with the second row having been multiplied and scaled up by two. Now with that in mind, let's now take that on and take that further forward with the notion of adding rows together. So say we start off with the identity matrix again, and say I wanted to replace row one with row one plus row 3. Well, what I'd be left with for row 1 would be 1, 0, 1, and then the same for the rest of the identity matrix. And when we multiply that now, what you can see happening is it's essentially picking out the row 1 element and row 3 element of each column and adding them together to generate the new row 1 in the resulting matrix. And it's important to know that is actually we're generating a new matrix. By this multiplying business, we're actually generating a new matrix. It's not just, we're not just scaling up the same matrix. It's actually an equation. We're actually creating a new matrix here. Now, the final elementary row operation that we need to discuss is the one where you can add a scaled version of a row to another row. So for instance, instead of 101 on the first row of our elementary matrix, uh, as in the last example, let's say that we've added to row one twice row three. So row one gets replaced by row one plus two times row three. So what we're left with is one zero two and then the rest the same. Now what's going to happen? Well you can see that it again picks out the first row and the third row but this time when picking out the third row we are multiplying each element in each column by two before adding it to row one and creating our new generated row one. So changing the identity matrix by one certain way is what an elementary matrix is. And using those elementary matrices, we can then pre-multiply any matrix we like and move the rows around, scale them and do whatever we want to them. So now with that understood, let's go back and think about our matrices. We have matrix A, 
and we have the identity matrix, okay? Again, these are two separate things. They are not part of an equation whatsoever. And what we're gonna to do to matrix A is we're gonna be using our elementary matrices, lots of E's is what I'm gonna call them, and we're gonna be doing all of these row operations to try and get this matrix A to output as the identity matrix. We're gonna keep pre-multiplying it by each elementary matrix until we reach an identity matrix. So that sets up this equation where we've got this whole group of E's, this whole group of elementary matrices, multi pre-multiplying matrix A, and that is equal to this identity matrix, okay? Now, with the identity matrix, we want to do exactly the same thing to it because that's the way the Gauss-Jordan method works. So if we do the exact same thing as what we've done to matrix A, to the identity matrix, what we're left with is this group of elementary matrices to the left pre-multiplying the identity matrix. Well, in that case, if we're gonna pre-multiply the identity matrix, that just keeps spitting out the same matrix. So all we're left with is that result. If you were to pre-multiply the identity matrix by all of these elementary matrices, that would just equal all of these elementary matrices. And so the thing to notice here is that all of these elementary matrices that we've just multiplied the identity matrix by is the exact same group of all of the elementary matrices that we've multiplied matrix A by to get the identity matrix. And that is the exact definition of what an inverse matrix is. If you multiply, either pre-multiply or post-multiply a matrix by another matrix to get the identity matrix, then that matrix that you're pre-multiplying or post-multiplying by is the inverse of the matrix you started with. So this group of elementary matrices, when multiplied together, is our inverse matrix to get, to get the identity matrix in this equation. So that's it guys, that's why the Gauss-Jordan method works when finding the inverse of a matrix. I know this video went into quite a lot of information in the end actually, far more than I thought it was going to. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, I really hope you got some value out of it and if you did, then be sure to leave it a like and if you want to stick around and stay involved, then you can subscribe to the channel and follow me on Instagram at McAvoy. Thank you very much for watching guys. I will see you all in the next video. Bye bye.